What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod. What's up, Tech? Once again, I'd like to introduce you to Raven. Raven is my new show build based on the new APU from AMD, the Raven Ridge APUs, and this particular one is going to be the Ryzen 5 2400G at the heart of the build. <laughs> So the build is pretty basic here. We're not going to be actually using a GPU. When you go out to a LAN event, typically you're only going to be playing games like CSGO, Overwatch, as well as something like maybe Dota 2 and so on and so forth, Rocket League, those types of games. And you don't actually need all of that power that people bring out there in their show builds. You don't need the 1080 Ti with the 8700K or a Threadripper build necessarily, but you still want to go out there and show off something that you've built. And that is what this basically goes ahead and takes care of for us. It's here really to show you guys that PC modding can be done on a budget and you can actually come out with something that looks very nice and isn't quite over the top. So of course to prove this we're going to have to talk about you know cost and what parts we went for and the parts we went for are pretty basic. We have a Fantex Enthu Evolve ITX case that has some RGB lighting and of course we've got the tempered glass version of this. Now that's going to run you about $120 and that's just upfront what you're looking at. The motherboard that we went with is a $99 motherboard from ASRock which is going to be the AB350 ITX with the AC wireless involved there and then the 2400G is going to be about $169. It is kind of fun because if you look at this build you'll quickly realize that the most expensive parts that we have going on here is going to be all of the water cooling. We have the Enermax Neo Changer for the pump res combo here and we went with a larger one primarily because we have no GPU. So this kind of fills out the case and shows off some of the the parts you know and components a lot better than maybe going with a smaller one because you just have that big old gap there for the GPU. That's also why we went ahead and mounted it horizontally instead of vertically and that can kind of actually make it a little bit more difficult to bleed but the way you can actually do that or the way I did it on this case in particular is we put the valve up at the top on the radiator and if you pop the front panel off you can just turn the case on its side and bleed the system that way and drain it that way as well which then stands up the reservoir and makes it easier to fill and so on and so forth so easy to fill easy to drain easy to bleed and that's just all going to be you know how you design your loop and so on and so forth as far as all the bends go we only had to really do one freehand bend we had two 90s that were pretty simple to do and that's pretty much because we went ahead and went with the alpha cool radiator here which is the cross flow so we have an intake and an outtake on opposite sides of the radiator as opposed to a conventional system that would have both coming out on one side. That definitely works better when we're only cooling a CPU and like I said we want to fill the case out so in this manner we are able to kind of take that one line from the front of the rad and run it all the way back to the CPU so we have one nice long straight run with a single 90 degree turn. Now the only one that we had to freehand ended up having three turns in it and there they're all 90s, but unfortunately because of the, the size of the case and needing to go under the pump res combo there and kind of curve under it, I couldn't really get a good kind of feel for it with using the tools. Now I did use it to guide for some assistance on the long run, the one right here, and we kind of just used a little 90 to bend that up and then just heated up the whole entire pipe to kind of make it malleable and get it in place. One of the things that really helps, especially if you're trying to freehand, is to get a heat gun that's going to have a temperature uh, adjustment on it. And I'll link one in the description below so you can check that out. Now the block that we went with was a little bit more expensive because we wanted the RGB and it's going to be the XSPC water block for AMD and AM4 and we'll definitely link that of course with the rest of the parts in the description below. And then for the fans I couldn't really find an RGB 200 millimeter fan at first that could get shipped quickly but we did find the Cooler Master and initially I was going to go with Corsair SP120s but because I wanted to put that nice big 200 millimeter fan 
and I'm a stickler for matching parts at least uh, fan wise for sure I wanted to go ahead and get the other two to match with of course the cooler masters it does have a controller but we didn't have enough to hook up the controller to as it only has four ports to everything so we had to get some splitters of course to go ahead and split it out and then we were able to run two RGB LED strips the three fans so that's gonna be five right there and the pump and I'm trying to think if we have oh and the two the two RGB LEDs that go into the water block or the CPU block there now there's never a reason to spend more money than you need to and I already had the power supply in stock and we used it for a lot of our bench testing it's the Thermaltake TR2 430 watt power supply now this power supply is pretty much more than enough or overkill for this particular system. At idle with everything running, including the LEDs and the pump res combo there, we were only sitting at about 45 watts. Now if we run a combined test and go ahead and take a look at the full load or full system load power consumption, we were only looking at about 102 watts at its max. So we have plenty of headroom there and I really don't recommend that you go out and purchase anything extra for a particular system like this. Now I did want to mention as well along with that is if you're worried about cable management and so on that can be a problem in a mini ITX build but there's plenty of room in this build because we aren't really using the basement for anything but the power supply and the RGB LED controller. Now for the cables, because you wanna go ahead and get those cleaned up, you can actually get custom braided extension cables, and so you don't have to do a modular design. And the ones we went with were from V1 Tech. He does a really good job on those extensions. And we went with just a basic black on the CPU 8 pin, and then we put one strip of orange on the, on the 24 pin, just to kind of set it off. So we essentially have a very red and black build with just a touch of Ryzen, which I felt like was suitable, of course, for this, this build, because now we have Vega red and we have the Ryzen uh, orange. And then to kind of set that off even more, since we're only exhausting through the radiators and that's going up, we didn't want to put a fan on the back to disrupt any sort of airflow or that flow that goes across and up. So what I ended up doing here is just taking a fan grill, a custom Ryzen fan grill, once again from V1 Tech, and just screwing it onto the back, kind of just branding it a little bit. Now we are looking at a power supply kind of cover option as well through V1 Tech as they are gonna be launching them soon for particular cases like this uh, Fantex case that actually just fills out the section or the cutout for the power supply. At the same time, I kind of feel like that showing off the power supply and that you can do a nice PC mod build with, you know, relatively cheap parts is kind of the point of the entire build. So I might just leave it where it's at. Now I did want to still go all out, meaning I did want to make sure that we had pretty much everything that was like top of the line for this particular build. And so I did spring up for the $260 kit of 16 gigabytes of the G-Skill Flare X 3200 megahertz from memory. And that's gonna be kind of expensive and I realize that you don't actually have to do that. Um, I just think that, that this is a celebration build for these APUs. So I wanted to go with exactly what, you know, AMD recommends for it. And it does improve performance considerably, you know, the, the 3200 megahertz. I didn't have any issues actually getting it to post with that memory. The only post issues we had was, or issues we had, uh, period, was the detection for the NVMe SSD. Now, we purchased a 512 gigabyte ADATA NVMe drive and it would not show up in the BIOS at all. I need to go test that on another system and make sure it's not that particular drive. However, the Toshiba RD400 posted no problem or showed up in the BIOS and I was able to install Windows 10 on that. I did confirm that it was seeing it over NVMe, so we also have the speeds, the super fast NVMe speeds. Uh, unfortunately, it's only 256 gigabytes, so I'm not going to have a lot of room for additional storage or additional games or anything like that. So that pretty much covers all of the parts. I'll try to go ahead and link them, like I said, down in the description below. 
and it's not a ridiculously expensive build but for what it is it's kind of ridiculously expensive i don't know just uh it's not going to be one of those it's going to be like five to six thousand that you usually see uh out at a LAN event but it's going to be more expensive compared to just building this like a reasonable system with an air cooler and uh like a low profile air cooler and a mini itx build which is more of what the 2400g leans towards but then it wouldn't make this build special. So that's the entire point. Now the case also comes with a little riser that has the Fantex badge and then goes over, but I had to go ahead and knock out the pin. And then I wanted to cover up essentially the drop down kind of basement uh, cables and all of that so that's why we went ahead and put that Fantex badge there I think it looks very nice and this is just those little things that you can do to really clean up a build along with the braided cables of course I did have to pin up some of the fan cables behind the 24 pin along with you know the USB 3.0 header and and that sort of thing now finally for the coolant I had some view coolant but specifically on the page or web page for how to you know use the view coolant it does state that you can't use it with the Enermax Neo Changer as the cap has aluminum in it and it'll break down very fast. I'm not sure how fast that is or anything like that but once I actually put the distilled water in there and just had the clear uh, clear look going I kind of fell in love with it it kind of sets it off the case already has so much red in it especially if you go ahead and like we have it sitting back here and turn on the red lights then you just, it just doesn't really need any colored coolant and we'll go ahead and maybe reconsider that when it gets closer to the time of taking it out to a show and we'll just have to go ahead and decide from that point on. Now, putting it underwater does increase the performance quite considerably. As to before, when I would overclock the CPU and then try to play games, it would decrease the GPU performance and then we'd have to knock down the CPU overclock to go ahead and kind of get that GPU performance back. That's all gone away now. We actually have this completely stable at 4.1 gigahertz at 1.45 volts on the CPU and we can run games as well and do a full system load test and have no problem in IDA 64 either. Now the temperatures will go up to about 85C if we overclock the GPU along with that and the best GPU overclock that we got was about 1775. We dialed it back down to about 1700 because of some issues in particular games and that seems to be pretty solid. We have it at 1.3 volts and like I said we're hitting about 85C which yes is quite toasty but not quite toasty when you consider the fact that 85C is what it hits on the stock cooler as well as on the Hyper 212 when you're just running it at complete stock settings and stressing the system. So we have decreased of course the temperature significantly. At idle it does sit around between 30 to 40 degrees Celsius and we are in a room that's at about probably 27C something like that. We're right between 80 degrees Fahrenheit which uh, do the conversion there, etc. I apologize for not having that prepared. Now with this done and the overclock in place, we did hit on Cinebench a all core score of 902. Yes, broke 900. I was super excited about that. And then we went ahead and ran some other benchmarks. I don't quite have them on me right now at this particular time. We were getting a lot better on the GPU, of course, uh, but nothing significant uh, as far as in-game performance, the games that we went ahead and played. There wasn't anything that I didn't already discover with just overclocking the GPU to that same range in the previous reviews, which you can check out up here in the corner. So that's pretty much about going to wrap it up. I hope you guys enjoyed this Raven build that I did and be sure to go ahead and share it with all your friends, etc. I'll try to get a Reddit thread up or something along those lines or imager or something so you guys can look through all the pictures and so on and so forth. If you guys are interested in how to's on this kind of custom water cooling, let me know in the comment section below. It does take a lot of time, but I am considering getting somebody out here or hiring some sort of like cameraman to go ahead and go over and and record this sort of thing because doing it myself just increases the amount of time it takes for me to actually get it done. So that's an option that I'm definitely considering or I can just go ahead and man up and do it myself. It's just gonna take me a little bit longer to complete these builds. We'll have to see what happens. Until next time, I'll see you next Tuesday.